You are watching today on the brink of a second wave. That's the fear this morning as new coronavirus cases spike in Victoria with six areas around Melbourne declared official danger zones. It does raise concerns the nation's economic recovery could be thrown into jeopardy and has prompted Queensland to reconsider its plan to reopen borders on July 10. One Nation leader, Pauline Hanson and Jessica Irvine from the Age and City Morning Herald join me now. Morning, ladies. Morning. Pauline, to you first of all, the Federal Minister Matthias Cormann still wants all of our borders reopened immediately, saying localised outbreaks in Victoria shouldn't hold the nation back. Is he right? He is right. Totally agree with him. You know, we're losing $84 million a day in our economy, 5,000 jobs a week, and Queensland is the worst out of this with $147 million a week in our economy. We've got to live with this. You cannot just sit back and keep waiting in case the second wave comes. And with 17,000 people a month coming into the country from overseas, and a lot of these people possibly bring the coronavirus with them, um, we just can't keep the country locked down. We've got to open up the borders. We've got to kickstart our economy. Otherwise, we're never going to get it going again and have an economy that's going to provide a way of living or standard of living for people. Anastasia Palaszczuk obviously believes that she has the support of the most of Queenslanders, otherwise there's no other explanation. No, it's not, because what I heard the last poll that came in, about 80% of Queenslanders wanted it opened. I know a lot of people are scared about it, but we lost more people due to the flu last year than what we have with the coronavirus. And this affects a lot of the older people in our um, nation, of course those with, with issues, health issues. But Taiwan, they actually kept their borders open. They told those people with those health issues, you stay home. The economy's going fantastic. They've had less deaths than what we have. We've got to handle this a totally different way. We've got to kickstart our economy. So those people with those health issues, I suggest that you keep yourselves in a safe place and don't go out there until we are rid of the coronavirus. But you can't keep the country locked down until there's no cases at all. It's just ridiculous to do that. Jess, the border between Victoria and New South Wales has never been closed. So, so why shut other borders now and put our whole economic recovery at risk? Yeah, look, that's always been a decision for the Premiers and they've had different stances and Queensland has taken a really hard line there and it's really damaged that economy. You know, that Queensland, the lifeblood is, is the tourism up there. And um, I, I agree, I think we should continue to roll back of the restrictions and have the open borders. I don't mind the idea of local area lockdown. So if you've got a hot spot, you've got families. I mean, this is where we're now seeing the spread is between families, intimate groups, and they, they're spreading it. You can quickly identify those we've got the COVID safe app this is what we've been preparing for you know we couldn't let it rip before because we didn't have the hospital capacity now we do we're ready to treat the sick and we have to get back to normal life I thought we were just coming out of this I was so excited it looked like we were going to have beat it didn't it yeah but, you know yeah. it's always existed it continues to exist overseas so if we want to have opening to the world again, we're going to have to deal with it. OK, how about this for a response, Pauline, to the demands from Green Senator Lydia Thorpe to change the names of Victoria and Queensland over <laughs> historic links to the British Empire. Senator Matt Canavan says Queensland should only consider a name change if Victoria goes first and changes its name to Mexico. Margarita, Senorita, Pauline, <laughs> uh, where do you stand on the attempts to rewrite our history? Look, I've had confirmation from the Aboriginals and elders, they called her Lydiot in Victoria. So they think she's a bit of an idiot. And, and I tend to think, with her statement of wanting to change the names of Victoria and Queensland, she is tending to be that, I was going to hold my reservations till she actually came to Canberra. But I'm tending to think that way, as I do with a lot of the other Greens and the stupid bloody comments they come out with. So anyway, um, she won't get my, my support on that anyway. It's pretty clear. Um, Jess, Matt Canavan says the Greens want to, quote, trash our history. Does he have a point? Uh, no, I think history is an evolving thing. And, you know, we've seen it with the Black Lives Matter and tearing down statues. Society decides at any given point who we want to honour and how we want to, you know, name things and what statues we want to have. So I'm all about renaming things. I like the way that the left-hand side of Australia has done it. It's just Western Australia, Northern Territory, Southern Australia. Yeah. Let's just rename Queensland North East Australia. Yeah. Uh, Victoria <laughs> can be uh, South East Australia. Uh, we'll keep New South Wales where I am, just the Premier State. And uh, keep the map of Tassie as it is because nobody wants to get lost on the way there. <laughs> How about we just do it democratically and put, put it to a vote instead of these idiots going out there making their comments? 
allowed to I say think that. Something just slipped through to the keeper, and I'm going to keep it there in the wicket keeper's hands. Good. Um, <laughs> good on you, ladies. Have a great week. Thank you.